Good evening, Cleveland and Columbus sports fans. This is Jen B, and you're tuned in live to the show of the land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Tonight, we are going to talk about the Browns, their not-so-pretty win over the Pittsburgh Steelers, some injury updates, some roster updates, and then we will talk some college football, how things are going with the teams that are still playing and some of the playoff races, and then we will talk some basketball, we'll talk about the Cavs, the Charge, and some college basketball, and then we will move on to some hockey with the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Cleveland Monsters. And we will finish things out with uh, some updates on the crew, the crunch, and the garden. So, we have lots to cover tonight, so let's get started with some browns. So, unfortunately, it was announced. earlier this week or I'm sorry last week that Deshaun Watson would be out for the season with a fracture in his throwing shoulder that requires surgery he had that surgery today in LA and they are saying the surgery was successful and he should be ready for the 2024 season so yikes Not the news you want to hear going into Steelers week, but you know, it is what it is and gotta, gotta roll with the punches. Um, Michael Dunn was designated to return from IR. Juan Thornhill and Marquise Goodwin were both ruled out for the game against the Steelers. Uh, Juan Thornhill has been battling a calf injury and Marquise Goodwin is still in concussion protocol. Dewan Jones and Michael Dunn were both listed as questionable. They were both active for the game. Dewan Jones uh, took some reps at right tackle, swapping in and out with James Hudson, depending on what package they were using. Um, so it, that was that was a little interesting. I was wondering what they were going to do because I was a little leery about James Hudson going up against T.J. Watt, but. It, it ended up working out. So DTR got the start. So it is officially DTR season take two. Uh, he played very well in the first half. Second half, not so much until the final drive of the game where he got the team down the field into field goal position so that Dustin Hopkins could kick the game winning field goal. The defense was lights out once again. Miles Garrett had two sacks and is now the NFL sack leader at 13. We did have um, a couple of injuries. Rodney McLeod and Anthony Walker both left the game. McLeod with a an arm injury and Walker with a hamstring. Uh... Rodney McLeod actually has a torn bicep and he has now been placed on IR. So he is out for the rest of the season. Anthony Walker is day to day or week to week. I believe they said not day to day, week to week with the hamstring injury. Dustin Hopkins once again kicked the game winning field goal for the second game in a row. James Hudson and Dewan Jones both played fairly well at right tackle. The Browns only had one penalty the entire game, and it was on James Hudson. But, you know, what can you expect from your third string right tackle? Fourth string? I'm not even sure what string he is at this point. But, so, not bad. Only one penalty the entire game. DTR did throw one interception, 
on a deflected pass. I believe it was to Amari Cooper, and it went off Amari Cooper's hands and was intercepted after it was popped back up into the air. Uh, but the defense held the Steelers, and they did not get any points off the turnover. Uh, after the game, the Browns signed quarterback Joe Flacco to the practice squad, and the goal is for him to be a veteran leader in the quarterback room while Deshaun Watson recovers from his surgery. Uh, his surgery was in L.A., and he will remain in L.A. for some time to begin his rehab as they don't want him flying right away. So Joe Flacco will be that veteran presence that will will be missing with Deshaun Watson, not with the team. Um, there is no agreement or belief that Joe Flacco is expected to be added to the active roster at any point in time. I would expect if, let me see, let me change that. When the Browns make the playoffs, that he will be added to the active roster to help out in the playoffs. But, um, right now his his job is to learn the playbook and all of that fun stuff and support DTR. Uh, wide receiver Trinity Benson and running back John Kelly Jr. were released from the practice squad. And the Browns will be playing the Broncos this Sunday. The Broncos are on a four-game winning streak. The Browns are on a three-game winning streak. So... We shall see what happens. The Broncos do have one of the worst defenses in the league. And the Browns, of course, have the best defense in the league. So it should be an interesting game. Um, the Broncos seem to have straightened things out somewhat. And are trending upwards. But I just don't know if they can overcome this Browns defense. If DTR can make it through the game with minimal mistakes, or no mistakes would be even better, but minimal mistakes, I think the Browns can uh, pull this one off uh, in Denver this weekend, and we can move on to 8-3. and three. The Browns are currently in the fifth spot for the playoff, in the playoff race, um... But it is like a three-way tie. The only reason they're in fifth place is because the three teams above them are all going to in position to win their divisions. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the Ravens, of course, are in the number one seed with their eight and three record because they are the only team with only three losses that has not had their bye week yet. So, um uh, Things may get a little interesting once we get to the Ravens bye week with the standings in the AFC. But as of right now, the Browns are in the fifth seed and would play the Miami Dolphins if the playoffs were to start today. So that would be an interesting matchup. But I'm glad the playoffs don't start today because I'd like DTR to get a little bit uh, more experience under his belt. But uh, let's move on to some college football. So Akron played Eastern Michigan. And at the half, it was tied up at 14 all. But they ended up losing 30 to 27. Their next game is Friday against Ohio University. And I believe that is their last game of the season. And they will finish the season like one and something unless they end up beating this unless they end up beating OU but I doubt it so because I believe OU is second in the division so I don't think Akron's gonna win that one anywho Ohio State's Sunny Styles has a 91.8 run defense grade leading all power five defenders per PFF College. Josh Proctor returned from injury and the Buckeyes played Minnesota on Saturday and won 37-3. to 
Trey Henderson had two rushing touchdowns. Marvin Harrison Jr. had a touchdown. Cade Stover had a touchdown. McCord finished the game 20 of 30 for 212 yards and two touchdowns. Jay Fielding had three field goals and was three for three. And uh, D.B. Hancock had another interception. Their next game is Saturday at Michigan. The game of the season. And we will see who is the better team, Ohio State or Michigan. Last year, Michigan won. But before that, Ohio State had won like every year for the last 10 or 12 years. So we'll see what happens. But go Ohio State. Cade Stover is the third tight end in Ohio State history to surpass a thousand receiving yards. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a Bolitnikoff Award semifinalist. And a defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles, is a semifinalist for the Broyles Award. Ohio University played Central Michigan and won 34 to 20. They are currently 8 and 3 and 5 and 2 in the conference, and they are second in the MAC. East Division. Their next game is Friday at Akron. Miami of Ohio played the University of Buffalo and won 23 to 10 and clinched the MAC East Division. Their next game is Saturday at Ball State. Ashland is set to play in America's Crossroads Bowl on December 1st, and they will be playing McKendry. Hiram's punter slash kicker, Chris Miller, was named all NCAC first team, and Hiram's linebacker, Gavin Cruiser, was named all NCAC third team. Mount Union played Alfred State in the Division Three playoffs and won 56 to 14. That's it. Just 56 to 14. No surprises. No surprises at all. Mount Union's quarterback Braxton Plunk is the a D3 all-time passing leader with 14,356 yards. Braxton Plunk was also named OAC Offensive Back of the Year. Their wide receiver, Wayne Ruby, was named OAC Wide Receiver of the Year. Ben Lilly was named OAC Offensive Lineman of the Year. Rossi Moore was named OAC Defensive Lineman of the Year. Mason McMillan was named OAC Linebacker of the Year. And Josh Jones was named OAC DB of the Year. The Purple Raiders also have a number of all OAC first teamers. Quarterback quarterback Braxton Plunk, running back DeAndre Parker, wide receiver Wayne Ruby, offensive lineman Ben Lilly, offensive lineman Giovanni Kennedy, bandit Rossi Moore, defensive tackle Duke Hill, defensive tackle Vaughn Factor, cornerback Josh Jones, safety John Rowland, and linebacker Mason McMillan. They also have quite a few second teamers. Safety Johnny Papish, Spur Ian Sexton, Safety Brandon Jansons, Bandit Caleb Brown, Tight End Chase Lawson, and Running Back Tyler Ekaveri. Oh, wait, there's one more. And Offensive Lineman Jarrett Burris. Their next game is Saturday against Ulma in the playoffs. Kent State played Ball State and was down 13 to 3 at halftime. They ended up losing 34 to 3. No surprises there. Their next game is against Northern Illinois on Saturday. Youngstown State played Murray State and they won 34 to 17. And their next game 
is Saturday against Duquesne. That is going to wrap things up for football. So I am going to take a short break and then I will be back to talk basketball on the show of the land with Jen B on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. This is Cal Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, Go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore I-E-S-R. And you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply. Always want to reach out to our fans. Again, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Are you a fan of Buffalo sports? Are you thinking of changing loyalties and becoming a Buffalo sports fan? Do you even know where Buffalo is on the map? Did you know Canada is closer to Buffalo than New York City? Welcome to the Buffalo Huddle every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your host, Patty Bax. This is a podcast designed for you, the passionate sports fan. I know you love your sports. Who doesn't? I cover Buffalo sports and so much more by bringing in the human elements. I call it Buffalo sports with a twist. Join me as we take a journey into the world of Buffalo sports. I guarantee you'll fall in love with Buffalo just like I did. Each week, we start with an inspiration, question of the day, a Buffalo fun fact, and a weekly challenge to you, the listener. Come huddle up with me every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Pacific Coast Time for the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bex on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. As we say in Buffalo, Go Bills! Set point. 
segment where I cover NCAA men's and women's volleyball, high school boys and girls volleyball, beach volleyball, and even professional volleyball. Catch the action every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Let's talk some basketball. So on Wednesday, the Cavs played the Portland Trailblazers in Portland. Darius Garland was out with a neck strain, and Isaac Okoro and Ty Jerome are still out. The starting five were Donovan Mitchell, Max Struess, Dean Wade, Evan Mobley, and Jarrett Allen. At the half, they were up 55-47, to and they won 109-95. to Evan Mobley had his sixth double-double of the season with 21 points and 12 rebounds. Donovan Mitchell led with 34 points, and Evan Mobley became the 13th in franchise history in blocks at 254. Friday, they played the Detroit Pistons in the um, in-season tournament, and... Uh, Donovan Mitchell was out with a hamstring. Isaac Okoro and Ty Jerome also still out. So the starting five were Darius Garland, Max Struess, Dean Wade, and Evan Mobley. Oh, sorry. Evan Mobley and Jarrett Allen. I guess the starting five has to have five in it, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. Anyway, they ended up winning 108 to 100, and they are now 1-1 one and one in tournament play. Garland had a season-high 28 points. Evan Mobley had his seventh double-double with 18 points and 11 rebounds. And Jarrett Allen had five blocks. Max Struess had a career-high four steals. On Sunday, the Cavs played the Denver Nuggets in Cleveland. Karis LeVert was out with a knee injury and... Donovan Mitchell, Isaac Okoro, and Ty Jerome were also out again. Starting five was Darius Garland, Max Struess, Dean Wade, Evan Mobley, and Jarrett Allen. At the end of the first quarter, they were up 29-27. to At the end of the half, they were up 66-58. to At the end of three, 92-58. To- 75 and they won 121 to 109. Jarrett Allen hit 5,000 career points during the game. Craig Porter Jr. played 25 minutes and had 21 points. Evan Mobley had his eighth double double of the season with 16 points and 10 rebounds. And their next games are tonight. At the 76ers, which is also part of the in-season tournament. Donovan Mitchell, Isaac Okoro, and Ty Jerome are all out. Karis LeVert is questionable, and they have not yet named the starting lineup, but I am going to assume it will be the same as it has been with Darius Garland, Max Struess, Dean Wade, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. Then Wednesday... They start a home stretch, and they will play the Heat, the Miami Heat, on Wednesday. On Saturday, the LA Lakers, and on Sunday, the Toronto Raptors. So hopefully they can keep this little winning streak going that they've got. Um, Interestingly enough, they seem to be playing better without Mitchell in the lineup. Not sure how I feel about that. I will be interested to see how things look when Garland and Mitchell are both back out on the court together. They have not played together in some time. Darius was out for a game and then Mitchell got hurt in that game and has been out since. So there haven't been a whole lot of games with both of them on the court this season. So we shall see what happens, but, uh, Evan Mobley and Max Struess continue to build their chemistry, and 
the Darius Garland feeds to Jared Allen and Evan Mobley are unbelievable. But uh, Darius Garland is definitely a maestro out there on the court when he's out there at point guard. And Craig Porter Jr. has been quite a pleasant surprise. Um, unfortunately, the charge is not doing so well because Craig Porter Jr. has been with the Cavs instead of with them. But uh, there is some talk that uh, Craig Porter Jr. may be added to the Cavs active roster. He is currently on a two-way contract, so we will see what happens with that. It hasn't happened yet, but we'll see what happens with Levert, too. If Karis Levert stays out for any length of time, they may end up doing it um, for the bench support because uh, Karis Levert was supposed to be the sixth man, and now he's hurt. So we'll see. He's questionable. So we'll see if he ends up playing tonight or uh, if not tonight, tomorrow against the Heat. So the charge played the Sioux Falls Sky Force. They were up 58 to 56 at the half. The final was 129 to 116, and it was a loss. The Sioux Falls Sky Force is my the Miami Heat's G League affiliate. Sharif Cooper led with 31 points. Zaire Smith had a double-double with 18 points and 10 rebounds. They then played the Windy City Bulls in Chicago and were up 51 to 50 at the half and ended up winning 104 to 100. Isaiah Mobley had a double-double with 24 points and 10 rebounds. They then played the Windy City Bulls again in Chicago again. And we're up 22 to 21 at the end of the first quarter, down 71 to 66 at the end of three, and they ended up losing 94 to 75. Sharif Cooper led with a whopping 16 points, and Isaiah Mobley had another double double with 15 points and 12 rebounds. Their next games are Friday at the Motor City Cruise. And Monday versus Grand Rapids Gold. So, the charge is doing pretty well. Um, they have been without Craig Porter Jr. and Moni Bates, as they have been with the Cavs since they are short on the bench with uh, Isaac Okoro and Ty Jerome both being out with injuries. So, uh things should start to improve for them if and when they get those two back but uh, as of right now they are still with the Cavs and I just saw a picture of Isaiah Mobley walking in with Evan Mobley so it seems Isaiah Mobley is also with the Cavs right now but the charge doesn't play again until Friday so that that's just fine Let's move on to some college basketball. Cleveland State played a Canisius and won 71 to 61. And then they played Eastern Michigan and lost 69 to 62. Their next games are tomorrow at East Tennessee, or I'm sorry, it's not at East Tennessee, it's versus East Tennessee. They will actually be playing in Cleveland. And then Saturday versus Alabama A&M. Ohio State played Merrimack and won 76-52. And then they played Western Michigan and won 73-56. Their next game is Friday against number 17, Alabama. Hiram played Pitt Greensburg and won 89-82. Hiram's Ivan Yang is first in rebounds, third in rebounds per game, tied for first in offensive rebounds, first in defensive rebounds in D3 basketball. Hiram then played Pitt Bradford and lost 85-75 to and their next game is Sunday versus Bluffton. 
Mount Union, number five, Mount Union, played Scranton and won 80 to 76 in overtime. The Purple Raiders' Colin Gurley broke the school record for threes made at 263. Mount Union then played Pitt Greensburg and won 113 to 79. Christian Parker was named Midstreet, Midstream Lighting OAC Player of the Week. And their next game is tomorrow against Wooster. Kent State played Hampton and won 100-62. to And then they played Missouri State and lost 56-52. to They then played Fordham and won 79 to 72 and their next game is Sunday against Charleston. Akron's Enrique Freeman recorded his 1000th rebound, making him the sixth player in program history to record a thousand points and a thousand rebounds. Akron played Heidelberg and won 114 to 56. Then they played Florida International and won 77 to 71. And last night they played Utah State and lost 65 to 62. And they are currently playing Drake and were down 35 to 29 at the half. That is going to wrap things up for basketball. So I am going to take another short break and then I will be back to talk hockey, soccer, and a little bit of baseball. So stay tuned in to the show of the land on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. It's IE Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. The most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is, your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Davidson. It's your boy, the entire lot. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at FastBreakISR. D-Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And give you guys spending time on a Sunday. Tune in.
What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy white tea. <laughs> they are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. You're back live with Jen B on the show of the land on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Before we get into hockey, I want to give a couple of shout outs to those joining me in the chat. Marcus Losgrate, who you just heard the drop for, who does our gloves off show. Larry B, the head honcho, who does our three and out shows, three and out NFL and three and out college, which he co-hosts with Taryn Rodriguez, who is also joining me in the chat. He also hosts our set point show, which is everything you need to know about volleyball and our SoCal Supreme sports show for everything Southern California. And Taryn asks, did you enjoy the AFC North football from last weekend? Oh, (laughs) the Browns tried to give me a heart attack more than once. And the AFC North went from being the most dominant division in football to being down to starting quarterbacks in a matter of three days. So (laughs) it's been an interesting week to say the least. So Deshaun Watson got hurt in the game against the Ravens and it was announced on Wednesday. I think it might've been Tuesday that he was going to be out for the season Because he needed a season-ending surgery. And then Joe Burrow went out on Thursday, also against the Ravens, with a wrist injury, non-contact. He has a torn ligament in his wrist that also requires surgery. So he will also be out for the season. And the Ravens also lost Mark Andrews during that game against the Bengals. He is out for the season or not out for the season. I don't know. They keep changing their minds there in Baltimore. So he has a fractured fibula and some torn ligaments in his ankle or something. I I don't know. But originally they said he was done for the season and now they're saying it's not as bad as they thought. And he could be back if they make a deep playoff run. So whatever. We'll see. I'm not going to worry about the Ravens right now because... We're the Browns, so go Browns, lose Ravens. We just want the Ravens to lose. Just one would be nice. Just one. Anywho, on to hockey. So the Columbus Blue Jackets are doing terribly. That's all I have to say. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Emil Bemstrom was waived. However, he went unclaimed, so the Blue Jackets ended up loaning him to the Cleveland Monsters. They then um, recalled Trey Fix Wolanski from the Monsters to replace him. The Blue Jackets 2023 draft pick, Andrew Straithman was selected to the USA Junior Select Team. So congratulations to him. And the Blue Jackets played the Arizona Coyotes. Was tied at zero at the end of one. 
then Damon Severson got a goal, bringing it to one to one. Then Arizona tied it up, and it was one to one at the end of two. Arizona got a power play goal, and then another goal, and then Severson got another goal. So then it was three to two, and the final ended up being three to two, and they lost again. <sighs> Then Saturday, they played the Washington Capitals. Boone Jenner broke the record for most games played by a Blue Jacket at 675. And it was Johnny Gaudreau's 700th career game in the NHL. The score was 0-0 at the end of one. Johnny Gaudreau got a goal. Good for him in his 700th career game. Bringing the score to 1-0, to zero. then the Capitals tied it up, and then they took the lead, and then they got another goal. So at the end of two, it was 3-1 to one Capitals. Provorov scored a goal in the third. It was his first goal as a Columbus Blue Jacket, and then the Capitals scored another goal, and it was 4-2. to two. Then Justin Danforth had a goal, bringing it to 4-3. to three. And that was the final. Another loss. Sigh. Then they played the Philadelphia Flyers on Sunday. At the end of one, it was one to one. Texier had the goal in the first period. Then Boone Jenner scored a goal in the second period. And the Flyers scored two more. So it was three to two at the end of two and they ended up losing five to two boo their next games are tomorrow at the Chicago versus the Chicago Blackhawks Friday at the New Jersey Devils Sunday at the Carolina Hurricanes and Monday versus the Boston Bruins they reassigned Trey Fix Wolanski to the Monsters and recalled Eric Robinson. And Damon Severson is expected to miss six weeks with an oblique injury. So, bleh. I haven't seen any other moves, so I'm not sure who will be replacing Damon Severson, but. I would assume they will be making an announcement soon since they play tomorrow. So we shall see what happens with that. The Monsters played the Rochester Americans on Thursday. And at the end of one, it was a 0-0. But they ended up winning 2 to nothing. Brendan Gauntz and Emil Bemstrom scored the goals. And Jet Greaves recorded his first shutout of the season. Saturday, they again played the Rochester Americans, and it was one to one at the end of one goal scored by Emil Bemstrom. Then Kent Johnson scored a goal, and they ended up losing seven to five. Yuck. On Monday, last night, they played the Charlotte Checkers. Brendan Gauntz scored a goal in the first. And it was one to one at the end of the first period. Charlotte scored and tied things up. And it was one to one at the end of the second period. Then Bemstrom had two goals, one normal goal and an empty net goal to finish the game out at with a three to one win. Their next games are tomorrow at the Charlotte Checkers, Friday versus the Toronto Marlies, and Sunday at the Toronto Marlies. So, the Monsters are actually doing pretty well. They are first in their division in the AHL. So, hopefully they keep that up. The crew extended Darlington Nagby through 2025 with an option for 2026. So that is great news. The captain will be remaining with the team for a few more years. And they will be playing Orlando City in Orlando on 
Saturday for the next round of the MLS playoffs. And it was just announced that the Cleveland Crunch will be playing again in 2024. They are the Major League Indoor Soccer Team for Cleveland, and their schedule was just released. They will start January 7th against Rapid City FC. Then they will play January 13th versus Ohio Extreme. January 27th versus Ohio Extreme. February 3rd versus Rapid City FC. February 17th versus Colorado Bucks. February 24th versus Rapid City FC. March 2nd versus the Colorado Bucks. March 9th. That's my son's birthday. It will be his 18th birthday. How exciting. Maybe I'll take him to a soccer game. <laughs> uh, versus the Chicago Mustangs. March 15th versus the Omaha Kings. March 16th versus the Omaha Kings. March 23rd versus Ohio Extreme. And April 7th versus Rapid City FC. Interesting tidbit about... The Cleveland Crunch. I just found this out today. They are playing at the Sportsplex, which is about five minutes from my house. So I may have to check out some Cleveland Crunch games because I actually have been to this facility once, I believe it was, when my daughter played soccer when she was younger. Um, she had an indoor, she didn't play indoor soccer, but she had, um, some sort of a indoor tournament when she played for the school. It, I don't, I don't remember exactly what it was. She's 23 now. So it was a few years ago, but, um, but it was a very nice facility and I know they've upgraded it since then and made it, uh, more uh usable for more uh professional type things other than just kids playing soccer so i would be interested to see what what it looks like nowadays and uh possibly check that out at some point during the season now for the Guardians, we have just a couple of updates with the Guardians. They signed Ramon Laureano to a one-year $5.15 million contract. And they traded De Los Santos to San Diego for right-handed pitcher Scott Barlow. And then they traded Cal Quantrill to the Rockies for catcher Cody Huff. Those are all the updates so far for the Guardians. So uh, before we wrap things up, let me just give a shout out to our sponsor, Planet Jerky. Premium beef jerky. Bur sorry, p premium beef brisket jerky that is available in seven flavors ranging in price from 10 to 20 dollars per pack depending on the size of the pack and they offer free shipping on orders over 50 dollars so be sure to check them out at planetjerky.net or on instagram at planet jerky and be sure to get you some jerky that's out of this world That is going to wrap things up for tonight. Thank you all for joining me, Jen B, on the show of the land. And be sure to follow me on X, Instagram, threads, at Believe Land Girl. You can also follow me on TikTok at Jen.BelieveLand. That's J E N. And dot believe land. Also follow the show for daily updates on Cleveland and Columbus sports news on X at Show of the Land IP. 
Next up is the Buffalo Huddle with Patty Bax with all that is Buffalo sports. Be sure to catch me next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern on the Show of the Land for more on Cleveland and Columbus sports right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Have a great night, Ohio. Yeah. <laughs>